Hi everybody, welcome back, it's Mandy. And I am wanting to do a bloom swipe on this MDF round. I think it's 12 inches. I primed it with just, just because it's wood, a flat coat of um, the Rust-Oleum Two Times Primer Spray Paint in flat black. And I'm gonna use a black pillow if I can get this open. <clears throat> the pillow is Color Place Onyx Black in Satin Finish. And I tend to use too much pillow. So, um, yeah. So, we're just going to give it a shot. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I've had it ready to go for quite some time. But I am... Um, I haven't gotten it done so I have an idea of what I want it to look like you know how that goes so I'm going to just do that a little bit to spread that out I don't want to spread it out too much this seems like it's a little crooked um, so and I'm really sorry my cake spinner pool is so dirty but it is what it is it's dirty so this is I'm just going to use a couple tube paints, but mostly color art. So this is Matisse Southern Ocean Blue. It, these are flow acrylics. Um, it's a really pretty color. It's, um, it is a, it's almost like a little bit lighter than a phthalo turquoise. But it's a really beautiful color. I did a coaster set with these colors the other day. So, so I'm basically going to put um, my deep blue with this color. It probably should be using like a phthalo blue too, but I'm not. And then the purplish colors, I think I'm going to swipe on this side. I really have no idea what I'm doing, to be perfectly honest with you. But I'm kind of just using paint I already have. So this is Matisse Flow Australian Red Violet. This stuff is uh, beautiful and incredibly expensive. Like, the sticker shock was remarkable for me. But it is a beautiful color. If I were to compare it to um, <clears throat> a more familiar color for me, it's similar to Quinacridone Violet from Golden. Um, but it is a very rich and beautiful color. So, <clears throat> so of course, you know, I don't venture a little, you know, maybe far enough away from some colors that I'm more comfortable with, but I love my teals and purples and blues and magentas and pinks. So this is Egyptian Coin by Color Art Prism Pour. There's four new colors out, by the way that you should have in your life if you don't. I need to order them. <clears throat> They're beautiful and you can get them in a four pack. So feel free to use our coupon code below. You can get 20% off anything on the Color Art website. As soon as I get them, I will share them with you guys and show you what they look like. They are beautiful from what I have seen. Probably using too much gold but I'm also a big fan of this color so <clears throat> so on the blue side I'm going to use a tiny bit of crushed velvet which is from color art um, because I have it mixed up and I'm going to kind of section off my colors a little bit, but I'm also going to kind of put them in the middle. And then I'm going to use Laguna Azul, which is a beautiful, like, almost like a phthalo green. Because my plan is that I'm going to swipe this way. And then I'm just going to string this along a little bit. The phthalo green, which is a Laguna Azul, beautiful color. 
<clears throat> and then this is Bellagio. Um, these are all from the Putting on the Glitz set, which I can't tell you enough good things about. They're so beautiful. Leslie never ceases to astound me. And then we're going to use this one is Blissful Bordeaux. Oh, I went the wrong direction. So I'm going to use a lot of this color. My thought is that these will, this will probably mix a little bit with the blue. If what I'm got in my head turns out the right way. You know how that goes. Again, I wasn't going to do this because I wasn't sure how it would look. Um, but I don't have very much of this one left mixed up. So this is Butter Toffee, also from the new Putting on the Glitz set. I think I'm going to put this one sort of in the middle. Because, again, I don't have that much of it left, so... And it's just really pretty. I want to mix up a fresh batch of it because I have an idea for how I want to use it. I probably used maybe too much of it for it to really be kind of an accent color, but oh well. Get off there. It's a little thick, as you can see. And then... Apple Rose, also from Putting on the Glitz. This is like a Putting on the Glitz swipe. And I'm going to kind of intermingle those a little bit just to soften since we have gold in here already. This color is amazing. And I'm, I'm going to swipe it and then I'm going to spin it out. I, I hope that that works out and it doesn't make the swipe result too crazy looking but at least that's my plan and I'm going to do just one more little streak of gold oh my gosh that's not one little streak oh well it's hard to mess up a swipe for me you know what I mean um where did I put the red violet I just had it. Huh. I'm almost out of this color. So rather than letting it dry up because it's like precious, I think we'll just do this. Right. <clears throat> Oops, I just got paint on my face. And I don't really want this to be too turquoisey, but I'm gonna do a little bit of that there. Okay. I'm going to use a Payne's Gray cell activator. And I'm going to swipe on little paint swatches like I like to do. First I'm going to pop a couple of these bubbles with a toothpick. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. I'm still not feeling all that great so I'm trying to overcome congestion and all that stuff so if I don't sound real perky that's why I'm afraid to cough. My husband is doing homework so I mixed up some paint and figured before I go to be lazier for the day, I'll paint something real quick. So this Payne's Gray is from Golden. It's been mixed up a little bit, so it's a little bit thick, but for a swipe, I think it'll be okay. So my plan is I want to swipe this way and then this way. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, so I kind of think I should do the ones that are the closest to each other first because that's where the margin for error kind of exists. <clears throat> 
So, dang, I put a lot of cell activator on there. So I'm gonna do this. It's taken a little to, bit to sell up, but that's okay. I don't like to blow it too much because sometimes you get cells that you really don't want. But sometimes they work out. So we'll let it we'll let it do its thing for a second before I get too involved in it. And I think I'm gonna do the middle section going the opposite way. It's really torn between doing this color and like gold cell activator, but I was already gonna use gold, you know, so I was like, hmm, let's just do this. Okay, so I'm gonna come from over here and very gently I'm gonna go around here. I don't know, I don't know you guys, I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, but we'll see. And I'm gonna try to use the other side of this card so far, it looks like it's going to be really pretty. Heart swipes, once you kind of get your consistencies down, are not as easy to mess up as a bloom, which is why sometimes I like to do them when I'm doing bigger pieces, because then it's less likely that it's going to be a complete fail, you know? All right, so then I don't know if I should go the same direction or go this way, because I don't really have a lot place to go here. I'm afraid to completely lose all this color. Ah, yikes. While I'm wa wasting time, I'm losing stuff here, so let's do this first. Yeah, I don't really know if I did a great job there, y'all. Um... This isn't really opening very well, so I'm gonna slightly blow on it. Um, I'm not gonna blow on it too much because I don't wanna get those really weird big cells. So, oh, okay, I think I'm gonna switch to a different card. Let me chunk this one. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna I don't know I kind of want to grab this one and go both directions which is contrary to everything I said I was going to do in the beginning but I'm afraid that when we spin it we're going to spin some of that completely off if I don't so let's see so I'm going to do this Like that. And now I'm going to just take the other side and go slightly across. Just not a lot, but enough to give us some detail. I don't really need this much cell activator though, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. I do this too. It's also, I have a feeling that's going to spin off, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. And then, you know, I really should not let my little pool get this dirty, but I do, so. Oh, and I spilled cell activator. And if you recall the last swipe we did with Payne's Gray, I threw it across the room by accident when I dropped it on the floor, so. You know. I'm just going to grab this like this. It's not perfect. It's thick. My cell activator is very thick. All right, let me get rid of this card and let's see if it's a mess or not, huh? 
So pardon my big head because I am going to expand this a little bit. So let me show you where we're at before we spin, because I don't know how this is going to turn out. There's some really pretty parts. All right, I'm going to very gently spin just a little bit, because I don't want to get the, the real giant cells. I kind of just want to gradually help the movement. Okay, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm going to keep spinning, but I'm going to tilt a little bit. Reason being is I don't want to lose like the really like cell active parts. So I'm going to tilt just a little bit to kind of get some of these edges. Whoa. All I have to hold this on here is just a little bit of pillow paint, so I probably need to chill with the tilting because it's not going to hold it like a whole lot. So I'm going to maybe tilt a little bit this way. I want to get rid of this, but I really like that, so I'm kind of torn. I have been wanting to do a swipe on a round. For a while. I, the only thing I think I've done in that regard is like a record round. I've done a couple of those. But the cells sometimes get a little wonky on those for some reason. Um, so I've been wanting to do, I have some cradled wood rounds my husband bought for me and I'm afraid to waste them so they're still in their box. So I thought let's start with MDF. There's a lot of paint on there, so one way or the other, I'm going to have to spin some of it off or it's going to crack. Well, I'm liking it. I just don't want to lose the really good part. But I'm liking it. I hope you guys are. Let me know what you think. Also, like Happy New Year to everyone. This is the first video I've released that's not a voiceover. And um, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know where you guys are at. I'm in Texas, and uh, I'd love to know where everybody's watching from. Let me know what you think of this. I'd love to know if you like it, if you don't so much like it, if you think we separated the colors a little bit too much. Like, I'm kind of struggling with that right now. Um... So I'm going to tilt very carefully because I have edges here that I like. But I'm sort of struggling with how much negative space we have in the middle. But I like it. So some people ask um, how to prepare MDF pieces to hang on the wall. So I do some resin things with crosses and Texas shapes and that kind of stuff and I, that is a question I get asked quite frequently so while I'm tilting I'm gonna tell you. So MDF of course is flat on the back. It's not cradled like a wood board and um, so I personally use a wall hanging kit and instead of screwing the hooks in, I glue them. And then I use the, I'm going to pick this up because I'm about to drop it. So instead of doing that, I glue them. And so far, no real issues. I would like to find, because these are obviously going to be resin finish to make them even more beautiful, I would like to find some very shallow screws that would not compromise the structure of the epoxy or the MDF or whatever. 
just to make it a little bit more secure, but I would hate to have a really great piece and try out a screw and find out it cracks or something. So, so far I have not attempted that at all. So even though we still have quite a bit of paint on here, it's not moving a lot. So we're probably a little more safe than I thought from a cracking perspective. What I'm trying to do now is kind of close this gap a little bit, but I decided to pick it up because I want to make sure I don't drop it. So you can see the detail is really beautiful and after this is resin, it's going to be amazing. So what I would like to do is get some of the purplish part just a little bit further down. So I'm sorry that you can't see perfectly from where you're at. So I just want to close that negative space gap just a little bit. And so my hope is that in doing that, I can tip a little bit more of this black that's right here off. Now if I don't do that, that's fine. It still looks great. I think I would hang it like kind of off center like that. So, you know, that can easily just be a point of interest anyway. But if I have my way, I would like to maximize where the eye is drawn to this part versus this part. Maybe that's not a big deal. Um, but I would like that. I think, um, I probably haven't done enough on a black pillow. I, there's just something so dramatic looking about it and it takes colors that maybe might be really bright otherwise because some people just can't can't get down with the really bright paintings on their walls. Other people love them so you just never really know. Um, I don't want to lose this part so I'm kind of carefully and slowly tilting this. That's why I'm not going like spin crazy because I don't want to lose either of the really celled up areas, but I am slowly but surely closing that gap, as you can see. So, um, I also, some people also ask about resin drips. So I didn't show you the back before, but I have taped the back of the MDF round with painter's tape. I don't really know that that's fully necessary with MDF because MDF is super easy to just sand drips off of, um, but I did it anyway. And so when this is resined, um, I can take my heat gun and I can heat up those drips and just get them off the back, peel the tape off and voila. But with MDF, you can also just, um, sand the resin drips on the back, so not too big of a deal. Um, I kind of like what we've got here. I need to see if I've tipped off enough because I don't want to lose too much on this other side, but we got rid of that part that I didn't like too much. Now I want to see about bringing this down just a wee bit, but ultimately if I didn't, I would still be okay with it. I don't love where we have these random drips right here, but I still really think the piece is beautiful. We don't really have enough left for me to blow pillow paint over that either. So, I kind of think we are probably pretty done with this. Um, I really like it. Let me know what you think. I want to do some coasters soon with a black pillow. One of, a, one of my Shelly Art friends recently posted um, a beautiful set and she used color art in them and they were really beautiful so I will probably follow suit and use similar colors and tag her channel when I do. I have a lot of things that I have not released yet that I've recorded and just need to edit. I was pretty sick for like a week and so I'm a little behind the eight ball so sorry about the 
inactivity on social media and uh, YouTube. But hopefully, hopefully feeling well enough to do that now. And um, so I thought she did a beautiful job. And so um, I hope to do those in the near future. And I'll tag her channel so you can check her out. She has great tips and shares them and is um, very kind and loving to the artist community. And I love that there are so many people who look to support each other in the art world. I think with so many people discouraged or spending a lot of time by themselves in isolation and stuff right now, that is super encouraging to have people like that around. So, and I think that she does a great job of that. So I will highlight her channel for you guys. I'm really tempted to dab that with my finger. However, there are shades of color in here that I think would not look so great. After. It would look very obvious that I did that. So I'm not going to do that. I also think I have messed up plenty of paintings in my life over a dot or something that I didn't like. So we're just going to say that that one adds character. All right. So I'm going to get all the drips off of this. And I'm not going to put it back down because I've been cleaning all the drips off on this foil here. There are a couple bubbles in here and I'm probably not going to worry about them. They'll either pop on their own or the resin will have to cover them up. But I, I think that we've gotten enough off of the, the top and I think we've closed this gap pretty well. So for the first wood round swipe, I'm going to call this a win. I think the colors are beautiful. I think the the depth in the piece is really gorgeous. Of course, you cannot go wrong with color art. And um, that Australian red violet is such a beautiful color too. I don't know how well you can see the dimension of those cells, but it is a very rich color. I gotta give it to Matisse. They make beautiful paints. They're crazy expensive, but they make some beautiful paint. Um, same thing with that ocean blue color you can see it right here just gorgeous color I did a, a set of coasters to try to test out those two colors together with some Egyptian coin and some interference gold and um, I think I originally saw that done by Lisa Marvin and I thought those are beautiful and I wanted to check them out so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this I'm going to turn off the ring light Ooh, that sure changed a lot, huh? So here we go. So pretty. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys for all your continued support. Um, if you haven't taken Shelly's course, there's a promo code in the description box below. 20% uh, off of anything on Color Arts website. Get yourself the new Prism Pour. It's going to be super beautiful. And uh, thank you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this pour. Appreciate you guys. Have a good day.